The story begins on the orbital station Athena. Prohibited experiments were conducted there. Now the station is destroyed. Bodies are flying everywhere. The last member of the expedition informs the command center that the experiment did not go as planned. The subject has broken free and is on the rampage. No one believes her. The subject is just a rat. The woman is not allowed to evacuate. Either she takes the experimental samples and returns to Earth with them, or she doesn't return at all. The woman returns to the lab, picks up the sample containers, and notices what used to be a rat. Now it is a spiky horse-sized monster. The woman makes it to the escape pod. The monster scratches the porthole with its claws in anger. The capsule flies to Earth and enters the atmosphere, but it's too early to celebrate. The damaged glass shatters and the capsule crashes. Let's go back to Earth. We see a team of primatologists led by Davis. He is trying to establish contact between a group of gorillas and a new young male. The new guy gets nervous when he sees people. Suddenly, a huge albino gorilla emerges from the thicket. Things heat up. The males don't like each other. When the young primatologist sees this, he gets scared and runs off at the speed of light. The rookie gorilla chases him, but the albino gorilla saves the stupid man. Problem solved. It turns out that the albino's name is George. Davis raised George, became his friend, and taught him sign language. George understands human emotions, has a sense of humor, and even knows a few obscene gestures. The young scientists are impressed by what they see. The female scientist even flirts with Davis, but he ignores her. He finds it much more pleasant to interact with animals than with people. As Davis leaves the park, we see a flash in the sky above his car. It's an escape pod explosion. Containers of mysterious specimens have survived and are dropping into three parts of a U.S. national park. One of the containers falls into George's enclosure. George paws at an unknown object and is sprayed with something green. In the morning, panic breaks out in the national park. Davis gets the message that his pet was in the grizzly enclosure, and it looks like this grizzly is out of luck. After walking around what's left of the bear, Davis tries to talk to George. The gorilla does not feel well and hides in a cave. When he comes out, it becomes clear. Overnight, the already huge primate has doubled in size. Davis is shocked, but what has happened? And more importantly, who is to blame? Rich people in luxurious offices, of course. Meet brother and sister, Claire and Brett Wyden. Their company conducted prohibited orbital experiments. Project Rampage was designed to combine the DNA of different animals and create living weapons. After all, if you can turn a simple rat into a monster, the military will pay billions of dollars for the technology. The main thing is to get the samples that fell out of orbit. For that purpose, Claire sends a group of mercenaries into Wyoming. Now let's meet another heroine, Kate Caldwell. Kate is a geneticist. In the morning, she sees a report about the crash of an orbital station. Some substance from the station fell to Earth and infected several animals. For example, George the gorilla and the unnamed wolf from Wyoming. Details are unknown, but Kate is terrified. She seems to know what the animals are suffering from. Meanwhile, Davis is in trouble. His shaggy friend keeps changing. His blood contains an incredible concentration of growth hormone. Davis doesn't know what to do, but the solution comes to him. Kate arrives. She claims that George has been affected by a special mutagen. It gives one animal a characteristic of the others. The result is monstrous hybrids that can grow endlessly like a shark, run like a cheetah, and fight like a bear. Kate was personally involved in the development of the mutagen. That means she can cure the gorilla. Due to the accelerated growth, the primate suffers from unbearable hunger. In search of food, it breaks the cage and frees itself. Davis tries to console the gorilla. A helicopter appears and George falls from a tranquilizer shot. But what's out there in Wyoming? The mercenaries land in the woods, looking for an infected wolf and find one. Not a wolf, but a 30-foot monster. The beast destroys the entire group, even jumps on the helicopter. Deciding that the wolf has eaten and left, the mercenary leader relaxes, but in vain. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sleeping gorilla, Davis and Dr. Kate are taken away by the CIA. The team is led by Agent Russell. Russell's target is the Wyden family. They have long been suspected of developing biological weapons. A mutated gorilla is an important piece of evidence that is about to be flown to headquarters. During the flight, Russell tells Davis that his new friend Kate lied to him. Kate was fired from the company a long time ago and doesn't know how to cure George. Meanwhile, the Widens learn that the CIA has captured Dr. Caldwell, which is dangerous. Eventually, Kate gathers dirt on them, but Claire Wyden finds a solution. The mutagen is designed to make all of its victims respond to a specific low-frequency pulse. Claire activates an antenna on a Chicago skyscraper. Now the infected monsters themselves will come to her office and destroy each other. Claire will take their remains and recreate the mutagen. As for the gorilla, the signal will reach him even at six miles. The monster will go on a rampage, destroying the plane, and the problem with Dr. Caldwell will solve itself. The antenna is activated. Something huge starts moving down the river towards Chicago. The wolf also rushes to the inaudible call 
all. George wakes up and gets angry. It looks like Claire's plan is working. The gorilla blows a hole in the plane. Fortunately, Davis and Kate manage to get their parachutes on in time. Russell is unconscious. Davis saves him, of course. The wreckage of the plane falls into a cornfield, and mutated gorilla survives and runs towards Chicago. Meanwhile, the FBI shows up at the Wyden's office. Claire is calm. She's already made sure that no one gets to the data on Project Rampage. While Russell calls for an evacuation, Kate tries to make up with Davis. She took a job with the Wydens to save her sick brother. Little did she know that her experimental designs would be used to create biological weapons. She wants revenge on the Wydens. Davis forgives her because now they have a common enemy. Russell, Kate, and Davis arrive at the military base. Here, they track the monster's route. The gorilla and the wolf are moving together towards Chicago. Davis tells the military that these species can't cooperate. Apparently, they are only reacting to a common stimulus. Chicago must be evacuated immediately. These things can't be stopped with conventional weapons. Naturally, the military ignores his advice. Davis and Kate are escorted out of the headquarters. The girl thinks it's urgent to get to Wyden's office. It's unlikely they summoned the monsters without backup. Most likely, they have an antidote that turns off the animal's aggression and allows them to be controlled. Davis and Kate decide to break out of custody. They make it to the helicopter, but Russell is already waiting for them. Fortunately, the agent does not stop them. On the contrary, in gratitude for the rescue, he gives Davis the keys to the helicopter. As the two fly to Chicago, the military becomes convinced that Davis was right. The wolf and the gorilla easily handle the soldiers. The colonel gives the order to evacuate Chicago, but it is too late. There are too many people in the city, and the monsters are too close. They're also too big and incredibly strong. The wolf and the gorilla make it to Chicago. They go to the emitter tower and destroy everything in their path. It turns out, not two containers of mutagen fell into the national park, but three, and the third monster is a giant crocodile. Neither artillery nor aircraft can stop the monsters. It seems they'll destroy anything they can get their hands on. The colonel decides to drop the biggest non-nuclear bomb he has. It will blow up half the city. Russell doesn't like that, so he goes to Chicago to follow Davis and Kate. Meanwhile, the Widens are about to leave the office. Claire notices that they have company. Davis and Kate have broken into the lab. They search for evidence but don't find any. I mean, the FBI confiscated all the hard drives during the search, but you can't fool Kate. The FBI took almost everything but the smart thermostats. And with those, you can connect to the company's servers. Unfortunately, the servers are empty, leaving only Wyden's laptop as evidence. Kate doesn't want to leave empty-handed, so she searches the lab. Her suspicions are justified. The Widens have the antidote, but there's no way to get it. The Widens arm themselves with a gun and order our heroes to give them the vials with the antidote. Claire then shoots Davis and takes Dr. Caldwell with her. She needs the girl to recreate the mutagen. The Widens climb to the helipad at the top of the skyscraper. Monsters rush towards them. The building begins to collapse under their weight. Widens fail to escape. The gorilla gets to the helicopter first and breaks its tail. Debris flies towards Dr. Caldwell, but she is suddenly saved by Davis. It turns out that he was just playing dead. Claire didn't hit any vital organs. But what's the next step? The monsters are on the rampage. There's no more antidote. Wait, Kate stole a vial. She puts the antidote in Claire's bag and then screams to get the gorilla's attention. It's payback time. Claire is now inside the gorilla. That means there's an antidote inside the gorilla. Claire's brother goes downstairs. Russell is waiting for him. The agent promises to let the guy go if he hands over the laptop with the evidence. He happily agrees and runs, but doesn't get very far. A piece of the wall falls on him in the street. Davis and Kate get on the helicopter. The helicopter's tail is broken, but they don't have to take off. It is enough to create traction and stay on the pile of debris. The building collapses. Davis and Kate land successfully and find George. Gorilla's already regained his sanity, but the happy ending is still a long way off. A wolf and a crocodile emerge from the rubble, and fighter jets fly towards the city. Kate leaves to contact the military and stop the bombing. There are thousands of peaceful people in the city, and monsters can be destroyed without the help of bombs. That's exactly what George and Davis are doing. First, Davis fools the wolf, who attacks him, but ends up in the crocodile's mouth. But what to do with the crocodile itself? Neither bullets, grenades, nor rockets leave a scratch. George is badly wounded and will soon be unable to fight, but his human friend is in danger. A huge crocodile is about to devour him. Gorilla makes one last dash and stabs a piece of rebar into the monster. The crocodile is defeated. Kate and Russell inform the military, and they call off the airstrike at the last minute. The gorilla's dream has come true. Davis agrees that this time George really did save him. George also saved thousands of civilians. The gorilla's eyes close, and he loses consciousness. Davis mourns his friend, but in vain. You remember that George has a great sense of humor? It turns out that the gorilla was only faking it. In fact, 
everyone is alive, so it's a happy ending. Thank you watching folks, hope you liked it. You can check another interesting recaps in the channel. Don't get left behind. Join me for best movie recaps. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Goodbye till the next recap.